beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. And I know he was introduced earlier, but this is the wonderful and talented Kevin Chin. Yay, Kevin, beautiful, thank you. Awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. And Merry Christmas to you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Looking forward to hot chocolate and, <laughs> and candy canes and learned the, the uh, origin of candy canes. And I uh, was a monk many, many years ago, back in the 1600s, actually, and I believe it was in England. And, and uh, uh, he, they were doing a live nativity scene, and he was getting a little frustrated with the young children that were a little restless. And so he uh, had some candy sticks, and he found a way to actually bend them in the shape of a shepherd's hook for the nativity scene. So it was, uh, that's how the candy cane got started. Didn't know that, did you? How about that? Interesting little tidbits about Christmas. It was made of candy, yeah, sugar candy. I don't think it was actually mint at that time. I think the mint and the stripes came later on, actually. But, uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting little tidbit about Christmas. Well, and um, I uh, was reading from one of my minister friends in Colorado, and most of you know that this year Colorado actually legalized marijuana, and he decided he was wanting to try and find a way to bring in more of the millennials to the service, so he's going to introduce marijuana into the service. And, and so their first song, <laughs> yes, yes, and, and it's the first song they sang was Ang Angels, we will Angels We Have Heard While High. <laughs> oh my goodness. There was a Sunday school uh, putting on a Christmas pageant which included the story of Mary and Joseph coming into the inn and, and one boy wanted really so bad to be Joseph, really wanted to be Joseph, but when the part was handed out, uh, another boy who was uh, something of a, a kind of a rival of his uh, got the part instead, and he was not too happy about that. He was pretty upset about it, actually, and he didn't say anything to the director, however, and so during all the rehearsals, he thought he might, what he was thinking about what he might do to, to, in the performance to get even with his rival who had gotten the part of Joseph. And so finally, the night of the performance, Mary and Joseph came and walking across the stage, and he'd gotten the part of the innkeeper. And they knocked on the door of the inn, and the innkeeper opened the door and asked them gruffly, what, what do you want? And Joseph said, we'd like to have a room for the night, please. And suddenly the innkeeper threw the door open wide and said, great, come on in. I've got, you'll have the best room in the house. <laughs> and Joseph was kind of stunned and wasn't sure what to do, but he thought real quickly on his feet, and he said, he looked in the place and he said, no way my wife is going to stay in a dump like this. Come on, Mary, we're going to the barn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's a time for fun and celebration, and that is, you know, and it's also a challenging time for a lot of people, and we acknowledge that, and then we acknowledge and encourage people just to be who you are and where you are in this time and this season. I uh, came across another wonderful little story. Uh, it's a Peanuts cartoon that I like. And uh, Peanuts, at Christmas time, Lucy is going around and she's wishing Merry Christmas to everyone. And then she comes to Charlie Brown and says, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. And since it's this time of year, I think we ought to kind of bury the past and our differences and, and be kind to each other. And Charlie Brown asks, well, why does it just have to be this time of year? Why can't it be all year long? Lucy kind of scoffs and says, what are you, some kind of fanatic? <laughs> well, I want to ask you, how many of you are fanatics in this room? <laughs> I think we all are in some ways because we really know that it really isn't about just a particular day and it isn't just about a particular season, that really what we're about is expressing more of that divine Christ nature throughout our lives and throughout the season and throughout each year and all through the year. Charles Filmer, the co-founder of Unity, described the Christ in this way in Adam's Sashing Power of Mind. He said, Christ is the spiritual mind in every individual. 
and the individual mind in the offspring of the universal of Jehovah mind. And so there is a, an awareness in unity that, that Christ birth is not just uh, uh, the birth of Jesus, although that is part of it and it is important, but it's also a recognition that that symbolizes an awareness and an awakening of the Christ consciousness within humankind, and you and I are a part of that, and it's about us waking up to that awareness of our own unique connection with our source, with spirit, and really beginning to practice ways that show how we can experience more and express more of our unique divine nature. In Keep a True Lent, he says, the Christ is God's divine idea of man, the embodiment of all divine ideas existing in the mind of being. And so it's really a, an expression of divine qualities that are within everyone. And they're within everyone regardless of the outer appearances, regardless of the outer race, regardless of the outer circumstances. And the reality is, regardless of the outer religion, the truth of the matter is each and every person has within them a divine nature. And part of our work in awakening that is, and recognizing it, is recognizing that even though it may be in an infant form in some ways, in many of us, and sometimes it's, uh, uh, sometimes it's in an adolescent form, and so we are, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but there is an awakening spirit within every person, and, and part of our unfolding is learning how to tap into that and learning how to tune into more of those unique qualities that we all have within us and getting past our individual personality self so that we can truly experience and feel more of that connection that we have with our unique divine source. In Keep a True Land, he also says, in the inmost center of every man is the, in the, in, is the indwelling Christ, the indwelling Christ resides. Now, we haven't quite... Uh, uh, updated the language of Charles these days. So when he says man, unfortunately, he, he is referring to humankind, not just us guys. And so I always like to you know, recognize that it's about humankind. In the inmost center of every man and woman, the indwelling Christ resides. And Christ really is a, an expression of an awakening, unique identity that each and every one of us has. We have a very unique identity in spirit. It is our individuality and it is also the higher self of spirit. And yet, and ultimately, we are all part of the one Christ. We're all part of that. And yet each and every one of us has a unique way of expressing that and that's part of what makes up the, the, the energy and the Christ consciousness. It is a way of really expressing love and peace and light and joy and sharing and giving and receiving. And each of us has unique ways of doing that and unique opportunities. And all of our life experiences are here to one, show us more of those unique possibilities. Our... Uh, some of you know that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm becoming quite a fan of, of the new Pope, Pope Francis. There are many, many things that he says that really resonate for me. And I, you know, I'm not a Catholic, and I don't necessarily agree with all of the theology that he presents, but he presents an understanding of spirituality and of spiritual principles that to me are really far beyond anything I've heard from other popes. And it really does it, you know, connect with me. He said, God never gives someone a gift they are not capable of receiving. If he gives us the gift of Christmas, it's because we all have the ability to understand and to receive it. We all have the ability to understand and receive it. And I believe part of that understanding is a recognition of the understanding that the birth of Jesus is a representation of something that is an awakening within the heart and mind and the spirit of each of us as individuals. And, as a, and for all of us as, as, a, as a, a race, as a, as a body of, of light. 
And so in order to kind of get a, a, another awareness, another understanding, maybe a little bit deeper understanding of some of the significance of the Christmas story, we're going to do a, a reading this morning. Um, it's called A Metaphysical Christmas. Before I do, I want to tell you a little, little thing that I came across, and there's a, a man by the name of James Fallow, who until recently was the Far Eastern correspondent for the Atlantic Monthly. And um, he reports that Americans have exported their confusion of, of symbols of Christmas um, to other countries. And he happened to be in Japan and, and uh, was in a department store. And he came across a display featuring Santa Claus holding the baby Jesus <laughs> behind a, a sleigh that was being pulled by the seven dwarves. <laughs> so there's some confusion about the symbols, and so we want to kind of do something today that kind of helps us clarify perhaps some of the, the symbols of the Christmas story. And so I'd like all of my readers to come up here today. There should be nine of you. <laughs> is Paula going to be able to join? Oh, there she is. There you are. <laughs> Wonderful. Excellent, yes. This is called the Metaphysical Christmas. The angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph. The maiden's name was Mary. And where's Mary? I represent Mary, the mother of Jesus. I am the perfect love that fills your soul. I am that in you which desires to see only the good come to you and every other creature in the universe. I am that in you which never wants to hurt in any way, for I am open and receptive only to that which is good and true. I am the gentlest aspect of the love in your heart, yet I am strong and perfect because all the power of good in the universe is with me and approves of me. I am the kindness and sweetness of your nature, out of which will be born the understanding of your true self, a child of God. I represent Joseph, the husband of Mary. I am the strength and wisdom within you, which protects and guides the love in your soul. Sometimes others suggest that I should separate myself from this love, that his love is making a fool of me. But I cannot do this, for I am only satisfied and complete when joined with love. I will never desert the love in your heart. I will nourish and support the new and wonderful good which will come out of our union. A maiden was betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, and the maiden's name was Mary. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Most High and of his kingdom there shall be no end. I represent the town of Bethlehem. I show you that though your days and life, even through space, may be crowded and jammed full, there will always be room in your heart for the Christ love to be born in ever greater ways. You come to me to take care of ordinary, worldly responsibilities. You are richly blessed and prosperous as you are willing to take care of your daily duties. Here in the midst of the crowds and pressures, you know that the most glorious moments in your life are not the so-called days of success, but rather those weary days when out of rejection, being shoved back, having been put down, you still know that nothing can keep God's good from manifesting in your life and your, 
and your world. You choose to bring forth positive changes in your life so that you can be a happier, healthier, and more peaceful and prosperous person. Now it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled and all went to enroll themselves. Everyone to its own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to enroll himself with Mary, who was betrothed to him, being great with child. It came to pass while they were there, the days were fulfilled that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her son, her firstborn son, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. I represent the manger where Jesus was laid. I am evidence of the fact that wherever you put forth the best that is in you, you make of it a holy place. No matter how humble the surroundings or how unimportant the occasion, God is there. God will protect you and bless you. You can always trust God. You need not look for God in the grand and impressive places. Think of me whenever you are called upon to do your best in a situation that you don't feel is quite worthy of you. And there were shepherds in the same country abiding in the fields and keeping watch by night over their flock. I represent the shepherds of your thoughts. I am the simple and natural tendency in you that dwelled in the fields of your mind. I gently but firmly bring you back into the right harmonious thinking when you are in danger of going astray. I am not the highest in you, but I am quick to acknowledge and joyfully surrender to your highest and best self. I am among the first to know when you have come into joyful realization of who and what you really are. And there were shepherds in the same country, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock. And an angel of the Lord stood by them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Be not afraid. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. I represent the angels that bring good tidings and great joy. I am the radiant thoughts that come to you directly from the mind of God. Through me, God tells you there is nothing to fear. Through me, God tells you there is much cause for joy. My news is always joyful. My news is joyful because it concerns the wonderful truths of your being. I tell you of your divine self. I tell you of all the peace and happiness that you are going to encounter. I tell you that you are one with all persons, and I tell all persons that they are now and forever one in God. And an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Now when Jesus was born, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. I represent the star which guided the wise men. I am your intuition. Sometimes I may seem a mere flicker in the sky of your mind, but to you recognize me and learn to trust me and to follow me. I become brighter and more familiar. God has given me to you as a special gift to lead you into your highest good. Trust me, follow me, for I will not fail you nor lead you astray. I am attracted, I am atta 
attracted only to the best and the true. For we saw his star in the east, and are come to worship him. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until they came and stood over them, and stood over them where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. I represent the wise men from the east. I am all the hidden and buried powers deep within each of you, which you are often so unaware. As soon as you came to a new realization of your wonderful true self, I came to you as further evidence of great spiritual resources that have always been with you. I brought you the gifts of a newly discovered truth about yourself. My gold shows the richness of your spiritual nature. My incense shows the beauty of your true character. My myrrh shows the eternal perfection of your life in God. For we saw his star in the east, and have come to worship him. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child, young child was. And when the wise men saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy, and they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him, and opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I represent the Christ child. I am the sum total of all the good, which is the real you. I am the love in your heart, the wisdom in your mind, and the peace in your soul. You have given me birth out of your very own nature, just as God created you out of its spirit. I am that in you which blesses you and makes you a living blessing. Sometimes you feel separate from me. Now, because of Christmas, you have finally realized you and I are really one. We are eternally one in God. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, goodwill toward all. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. So hopefully this gave you some awareness or some insight into the symbolism behind the story of Christmas. And symbols are a part of what help to make up any story. And they're here to help awaken within us the possibilities of those characteristics and those qualities of that divine light and that Christ child. A Course in Miracles says, a star, a light in darkness, is a sign of Christmas. See it not outside yourself, but shining in the heaven within, and accept it as the sign, the time of Christ has come. The Christmas this Christmas, give the Holy Spirit everything that would hurt you. Let yourself be healed completely that you may join with Him in healing. And let us celebrate our release together by releasing everyone with us. The Prince of Peace was born to reestablish the condition of love. Let no despair darken the joy of Christmas. For the time of Christmas is meaningless apart from joy. And so what I will encourage and invite you to do as you're going through this Christmas season is to begin to recognize that joy is your natural state. It is the truth of your being. And it is a decision and a choice that you can make. It is not dependent upon any gift that you receive, or give for that matter, Giving gifts and receiving gifts can give great pleasure, and there's a wonderful awareness about that, and it's valuable to honor the pleasure that you receive from giving and receiving gifts. But joy in and of itself is something that is not given or received. 
It is your natural being. It is something that's chosen. And so as you go through this Christmas season, my hope and my prayer for you is you take every opportunity, regardless of what's going on out in the world, to return back to that place of knowing the truth of your nature, the truth of your, truth of your Christ self, and the joy that that truly is. I hope you have a very, very, very Merry Christmas. Let's move into our meditation time. Allow an energy of relaxation and peace to flow gently over you from the very top of your head, gently down over your face, down into the muscles of your face and jaw and neck releasing any tensions, any cares, any concerns there, releasing the shoulders, blessing the arms with feelings and thoughts of peace. Feel that peace flowing down your back, relaxing and being at peace allowing yourself to be supported by the chair you're in, just as you allow yourself to be fully supported by the presence of God here and now. Breathing in and breathing out, releasing, allowing your hips and legs to relax. It's in a place of relaxation and peace that we are most open and receptive to knowing and feeling and experiencing that connection we have with our source, the oneness of spirit. We're most open and receptive to hearing the inspiration, the protecting spirit of Joseph, the nurturing spirit of Mary, the humility and the humbleness of the manger. The intuition and the guiding light of the star. Recognition of those wise voices that seek out our divine nature and listen. To the call of something greater, of something higher, something brighter, clearer, something that expresses absolute faith and trust in spirit and source. We're so grateful that all of these are within us and are each helping us to awaken to our own unique Christ self. We're grateful to Jesus the Christ to showing us the possibilities and the potential of humankind and for each of our individual lives. Thank you, blessed spirit. In the silence.
breathing into the manger of your heart. Feel and know and let yourself honor the specialness of the presence within. The healing power that that brings to you and through you. Yes, there are times when we are caught in the hustle and bustle of life but we know that there's always a place that we can turn to to truly move beyond and experience an upliftment of light and life and joy. And we can choose. We can choose. the high joy vibrations. You're invited to choose that this day. And let your heart expand with that a willingness to allow the joy that you are, the spirit of light and life and peace to unfold and grow and expand in all areas of life and to all those in your life. Thank you, blessed spirit. Take a nice deep breath. Give thanks for the opportunity. And so it is. Take another deep breath and when you're ready, gently open your eyes. Be present here and now, shining that joyous light to those around you as you awaken to this room and give thanks.